Hi, welcome to the NRC Roundtables. NRC stands for the Northeast Resiliency Consortium, which is a group, essentially, of seven different community colleges uh, between New Jersey and Boston, all dedicated to this abstract idea of resiliency. Uh, we do. Uh, we are actually all funded by a three-year, what's called a TACT grant from the Department of Labor. I'm not going to go through what that acronym means. But uh, we wanted to put together a quick little introduction to what the NRC is and what we represent and what we're trying to do in case you either wanted to reach out to us uh, in terms of you know getting your own kind of thing like this, grant-funded uh, efforts off the ground, or if you're just interested in community college education and workforce development, because that's really what the tax grant is all about. It's about getting workforce development up and running, either created or enhancing what's already there in community colleges specifically. With me, we have Alexander Scheinert, who is the communications assistant for the NRC. And I, if I didn't introduce myself yet, I am Ed Fiennes. I am the content specialist for the NRC. We are part of the lead team, which is based out of Passaic County Community College, which is one of the seven. Alex? Ed? Say hi. Hey, everyone. There we go. Thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be periodically presenting uh, or posting different uh, audio files. I guess we can call them podcasts. Want to go and call can we call them podcasts? Let's call them conversation. Conversation. We'll be posting digital conversations onto the SoundCloud page um, of varying, varying lengths, varying kinds. Uh, the one that's up there right now, as you can probably notice, is uh, from Bunker Hill, the IT faculty at Bunker Hill. I interviewed uh, three different faculty members in a, in a roundtable format. That's kind of the format we like. Uh, about how they uh, input resiliency into their classes and, and how they feel about resiliency in the IT field in general as a whole, uh, all being former employees of said field. So let's talk a little bit about what the NRC sort of the sort of the big uh, what I what I would call in my classroom a big ticket item. So the NRC is sort of a, a big ticket idea. Um, you broke it down r rather eloquently for me earlier so today. Nice. Thank you. With in terms of resiliency, preparation, support, and community. So, I'd like to go through all four of those things as briefly as we can. Um, resiliency. What is the defi What is actually the working definition that we've used for resiliency? Well, again, resiliency is a key part of our name. So that's something that I think it really makes sense to start off explaining that how we define that. So we define resiliency as an individual's persistent development and application of knowledge, skills, and resources that effectively help one adapt to change and overcome adversity. We tie this to five different competencies within the NRC, which we can touch on, but they all kind of tie into this larger idea of preparing individuals for the world around them and really having that come to life in an educational setting. Yeah, and that and educational setting is certainly split up into um, certainly sort of two bigger, you know, bigger areas, two bigger boxes, which is the coursework that students are actually doing both on the credit and the non-credit side uh, in certificate and degree granting programming. Uh, and then the support systems that support those students both inside and out of the class. So it's not about you just kind of plunging into the pool. It's about somebody teaching you how to swim. Uh, and that can mean both hard skills content-wise and soft skills content-wise. So uh, it's really exciting. I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing that's happening in community colleges all over the country, certainly. But uh, what I think makes sort of NRC maybe stand out a little bit, I mean, certainly in terms of its, its origins as um, – coming out of the tragedies that are that have kind of hit the area both financially emotionally uh, I mean loss of life you know the hurricane Sandy you have the Sandy Hook shooting you have the Boston uh, the Boston Marathon bombing and you know again just general economic struggle um, basically up and down the yeah to the region of between New Jersey and Massachusetts um, and again, why we, we believe this is going to be helpful in the long run for anybody who's looking to kind of get this kind of federal funding and really make something, really really make a go at it in terms of making, uh, really thinking about community college education as a way to not only get a better career or a career at all, but a better life. And that there there really is a way to, the, the community colleges are is the way in to that specifically, so which 
comes back to the idea of preparation. Yeah, I mean, and the preparation, it ties back to the layer of an individual, an institution, and the community. So, you know, those external factors that affect an entire community and how an individual responds or how an institution seeks out resources in that moment of crisis is really all about preparation. And so when we talk about what we do for NRC, it's not just about preparing students, you know, to enter the workforce, but it's also about identifying ways that an institution that's a part of a larger community can be prepared for changing times and how they would handle adversity when it arises. Yeah, which actually brings us, I think, nicely to um, the four, I think the five competencies that we broke the definition down into uh, they, I mean, self-awareness being almost maybe the first, in my mind, having worked with these words for a little bit, um, s- self-awareness being sort of the primary one, which is the road to the other four, which is uh, critical thinking, collaboration, refle- reflective learning, and adaptability. There we go. I got all five. You got them all. Um, and the impl- the Im- by implementing them in coursework specifically, uh, and in some cases in the student success course, let's say, those may actually be taught explicitly as sort of content areas. Um, it's the, the, I think the five, having the five competencies and having talked with a lot of different professors, um, a lot of what they're doing already falls into that. yeah falls into that and sometimes it's almost just maybe and this is a poor comparison but sort of explaining their jokes mm-hmm. it's sort of like just turning to a student and saying you know n- no which is the reflective learning component because a lot of what they're obviously critical thinking is probably the most common one that that uh, a single is instilled. In, is instilled in anything that you do in an educational mm-hmm. field but to both consciously be aware of what that really means to you right. and then saying all right i'm going to teach someone how to collaborate or I'm going to teach someone how to reflect or to be aware of themselves. Like those things as active, when you're an instructor who actively does that, that really can have a really good effect, we believe. And we're certainly uh, doing the kind of research and evaluation of our own of our own courses in our own schools that, you know, that will hopefully bear out, bear out that that's really kind of where, that's really what makes makes a real difference both in retaining the skills that the content requires and also f- just feeling good about what you're doing like feeling like you're in a community and that you're being supported by a community of students a community of professors and a community of a school itself and then you take that outside because a lot of what we do at the NRC uh, is it's or the the programming that we're talking about here is service work it's in IT it's in energy uh, it's in healthcare. It's we we are training the people that form the infrastructure that shape and save the infrastructure when it is in crisis. Getting back to its or the NRC origin story, that those are the people that are counted on to keep a community as a community in in community shape, and that's really what we're doing. So in order to train those people to do that, resiliency became the thing that we wanted to infuse into everything that is uh, that is being taught in and outside of the classroom. So in terms of support specifically, though, because, again, I mean, I was just talking a little bit about coursework, the, the kind of support that um, – I'm trying to think of a, maybe a really a, a good a – a, maybe a good example of what support would be. I mean, I think a good example is that our, within the NRC institutions, there's individuals whose work falls under employer engagement. There might be someone who helps develop jobs in that area or student support services. So this is someone who counsels a student as they come in periodically throughout their time in a program. Yeah, and, tr- and an intrusive engagement with the student from the very beginning, which – you know, any four-year school can certainly say that they try to do, but um, and they may may do so very successfully in, in a lot of cases. But in community colleges with such a transient population, where you may only be coming on campus one day a week for a few hours and then you go back to your life, um, a lot of what gets lost. Again, this is a soft getting into the soft skill thing is how much priority and how much time are you spending outside of the classroom on that class and how dedicated are you to it and why are you doing it and so on and so forth. So the kind of intrusive support, like again, job development, that being on the back end or the, the at the end, once you've completed your course, you have your certificate. 
the, obviously you you didn't get that certificate because you had an empty space on your wall. You actually needed that a job an employer needs that certificate in order to give you a paycheck. So, but again, if that person doesn't have the skill or the support, the, the the certainly the skill to to write the resume, to put their face out there in public, and to get that interview and win it, but also the support to find the job to get them into the room. Specifically, that's what a lot of our students lack in a lot of cases, and that's where we again the NRC funding is going towards things like that in terms of job development. Absolutely, and it's definitely the the support systems that are created are tied to student support, but we know that those are really dependent upon the relationships that the larger community helps to foster. And so, you know, within an NRC team at an institution, it's more than one person, and it's a collective, collaborative environment that is really seeking to support students um, during their time there and then after. And so I think it's really important to highlight, you know, that people come into our programs and they might be transitioning, they might be looking for a new career path, their education might need to be updated in order to make them the most marketable for the workforce. So the way that support ends up being utilized at each of the institutions is really customizable and it's not a one size fits all thing, but again, it's about that community. Yeah, and I think what I've noticed is sort of that fractal, uh, that sort of fractal pattern where the, the community of the classroom is replicated, you know, larger and larger when you get to the program and then you get to the NRC and then you get to the larger NRC community of seven schools and going into the third and then there are our, our, our th- a six month extension after our third year of, of this grant that it's going to be about plugging into a larger sort of the larger community of community colleges out there. And again, that's what these would you not they're not podcasts they're conversations what these conversations for now, <laughs> for now. For these now. conversations are about so uh thanks for obviously listening to this podcast or conversation and uh we will uh keep stay stay tuned and we will you'll get to see or listen to more and more of these conversations here on our soundcloud page alex thanks for listening everyone thanks we'll talk to you soon